Hello everyone, my name is Pixel Rift and welcome back to the Minecraft Survival Guide. I hope you guys are having a good day. We're starting off today in the ice farm that we made a few episodes ago. Had some great comments about this one. Thank you guys all so much for your thoughts and recommendations, specifically the folks who said maybe you could line the ice farm with wood instead of stone just so that you didn't accidentally like pickaxe through the walls down here. Like so, I mean, yeah, it would certainly make sense to make it out of a material that didn't instantly break when I mined it with an efficiency pickaxe. So that was a great idea. And I'm gonna gather a little bit of the ice here, but then we're gonna do an episode that is about ice in a different way because some of the folks in the comments suggested how about I use Frostwalker to create the ice instead of using this kind of ice farming mechanic. And it, it occurred to me that a few of you folks might not know what Frostwalker is, or how it works. I think I've mentioned it offhand in a few previous episodes of the Minecraft Survival Guide, but I have not yet covered it myself. So I'm gonna finish gathering up this ice. I'm going to gather a few resources. I'm going to make myself some new boots, try and track down a Frostwalker enchantment for them. And then I'm going to explain why Frostwalker would not be a decent solution for this ice farm. I've already gone over it in the comments of that episode before, but I feel like we may as well show this on video, mostly because Frostwalker is actually a really cool enchantment that you can do a lot of fun stuff with. So with all this ice collected, I'm gonna go and pack this away and then we're going to try and go on a bit of an adventure. Now for that adventure, we will need a new pair of diamond boots. So I'm gonna break into this block of diamond. Why is there a button in here? How very strange. All right, <laughs> I'll put the button up in here and we'll break into this new block of diamonds so that I can get myself some more boots. We're gonna have some diamond boots and these are going to be our permanent Frostwalker boots once we get the rest of the enchantments all set up on them. We'll look to get protection, unbreaking, and mending on them as well, but Frostwalker is kind of the thing I'm after first. So let me see if any of these villagers trade Frostwalker. The problem with Frostwalker is that it is one of the two enchantments that you cannot get through the regular enchantment table. You need to get it through trading or find it in a treasure chest. And to my knowledge, we do not have a librarian who trades Frostwalker. This guy does channeling for six, uh, let's see who else we've got. We've got Loyalty, we've got Infinity and Fortune 3 there, which is an amazing trade, very useful. I do not think we have all that many librarians in here, and I think the ones that traded Frostwalker are elsewhere. I think we may even have a Frostwalker trading librarian over at the village where we first found Mendelssohn, our mending villager, so I might head back over there and see if he's still knocking around. Naturally, it would help if I bring some trading supplies with me, so I've got some emeralds, I've got some paper, we'll probably bring a few books as well. Yeah, I've been doing a little bit of trading with mending villagers because the mending trade might not be there for too much longer. The upcoming updates, let me just quickly check that I don't have Frostwalker in here already. The upcoming updates seem to be changing the way trading works a little bit, and we'll go into that in a future episode once the update actually comes around. But it seems like villagers with certain trades may not keep those trades permanently anymore. So it'll be worth looking into that in future. For the meantime though, I think I've got everything I need to go over there and trade with the librarian as long as the guy is still there. Otherwise we might have a little bit of searching to do. And it seems like the worst case scenario has happened here where our Frostwalker trading friend might have kicked the bucket. Now this was the village, if you remember that I came out to, to wait for a thunderstorm to happen. So a lot of day night cycles happened while we were out here and I imagine he got eaten by zombies or something like that. There are still a couple of villagers around Around here so they are not like completely gone but unless he's lurking on the edges of the village somewhere I don't see our librarian friend there's a couple of folks still here there's a shepherd or two there's a butcher and a farmer but we do not seem to have the Frostwalker trading librarian that I was hoping for oh well Oh well, let's see if we can find one elsewhere then. There are a whole bunch of small plains villages in this area. We've got shepherds over here. Let's see if there's any white coats in the village. I'm not certain there will be. Oh, there's a little meeting happening in here. There's a couple of white coat guys. This looks promising, but again, Frostwalker is one of those things that you have to hope that it's out there somewhere. Sharpness, five for 28 emeralds. That's not a terrible trade and 26 for paper ain't too bad either. Let's see what you have, my friend. <laughs> Infinity for nine emeralds is also not too bad. Let me grab one of those books just in case I need a new bow in future because remember, Infinity and Mending are mutually exclusive, meaning they can't both be put on the same bow. So I only have Infinity on this one. I do not have Mending. Eventually that will become too expensive to repair. Now our last book here is 
fire aspect. Basically the opposite of Frostwalker, kind of not the one I needed. Never mind, let's see if your other white-coated friend in here has any good trades. Where are you? Of course you're a cartographer. Great, okay, <laughs> let's find a librarian. This guy is a librarian, has an impaling four trade for a lot of emeralds. Let's see if he's got anything slightly better, or we may need to find, <laughs> find some shelter in a second. Yeah, this guy's run off to his little house to begin with, and uh, let's see what else we can grab here. Let's get a bookshelf or two. This is probably not going to lead anywhere unless I'm very, very lucky with the trades, but three books per librarian. There's a decent chance that we might get something eventually. And another infinity trade. Does everybody want me to have infinity? <laughs> it seems like it, and that's fine, I guess, but oh, yep, the villagers are being attacked by zombies. Oh, well, I think we will probably try it further afield. There's another village out here on the water. There's a guy trapped down here in a hole. Are you a Frostwalker trader? You are! It was a different village the whole time. Oh, fantastic. I'm so glad I saved this guy. And it looks like we might just about have enough emeralds to trade for a single Frostwalker 1 book. I'm glad I came out here. <laughs> Might have missed that otherwise. Fantastic stuff. Frostwalker 1. Okay, I'm actually going to go ahead and grab another book from this guy, but I will need to run back to the farmhouse and get some more emeralds to trade with. But at least I made, I took some steps to secure that guy in there to make sure that he wasn't going to get killed by zombies. Good stuff. All right, at least <laughs> that's going to cut down the amount of time it'll take me to make this episode. And luckily, thanks to the mammoth trading sessions I've done from my melon and pumpkin farms, along with other things, I do have a decent supply of emeralds. So that should be enough to get us a second Frostwalker book, and the maximum amount you can have with Frostwalker is Frostwalker 2. That is the highest tier the enchantment goes to. So all we will need is two books. We'll grab a couple of others from the villagers in here, and I think we've got a few in the chest that we can apply to these, this new set of boots, and then I'll be able to show you what Frostwalker does. Yeah, the village where I found and trapped the Frostwalker guy is basically directly north. I think that's north anyway. Oh no, it's west. It was directly west of the village that we actually found the mending villager at. So that's quite convenient in the grand scheme of things. And there we go. A second Frostwalker book. Fantastic. What other trades does this guy have? Just out of interest, because I, I wonder if this guy has any other nice trades lurking at the the depths of the inventory. Uh, power 3 trade, not very good. There's still probably another trade left to unlock after this, but I'm running out of stuff that I can trade with. I don't have that many emeralds and stuff left. So, back to the house. And yeah, we can... Uh, I think we'll start by putting Frostwalker 1 on these boots, and then I can show you the difference that happens when you upgrade it. It's subtle, but it's worthwhile. So let's stash the Infinity Book in here, and let's grab a Mending. Let's see if I have an Unbreaking in here. We have Unbreaking 1. There's Unbreaking 3. Fantastic. We will use that. And then I wonder if we have protection four. Perfect. Okay, good. I've been doing a little bit of enchanting, as you can tell from the fact that my levels have dipped by about half since the last episode. But we can put these books together and they will make an excellent combination to apply to the boots. Let's add protection and unbreaking together. We'll probably try and do this with the least amount of levels spent. There we go. Unbreaking three, protection four. We can add mending into the mix like so. And I think what we'll do is we'll add Frostwalker one now and then we'll add Frostwalker two to the boots later. So with that, that is going to cost 18 levels, taking us down to 29. I'm back below the 30 level threshold for once. Now let's see, that's going to cost 19 levels to upgrade it to Frostwalker 2. So we'll demonstrate Frostwalker 1 first. Now bear in mind that Frostwalker and Depth Strider are mutually exclusive. You'll notice I used that phrase a little bit earlier to describe how Mending and Infinity cannot be put on the same bow, Depth Strider and Frostwalker cannot be put on the same pair of boots. And the reason for that is quite simple, really. Depth Strider allows you to move more easily through water. You can swim through water a little bit faster, and you can walk through water at a normal pace instead of the water slowing you down a great deal. What Frostwalker does is eliminate that by basically turning all of the water around you into ice if I can yeah there we go <laughs> sometimes it takes a moment or two to kick in but any water that you step out onto from an adjacent solid block will start turning into this ice and there is something quite special about this ice because it starts to break after a while when it is exposed to sunlight most ice won't do that most ice will break after it's exposed to block light from a torch or some other kind of light source Frosted ice works differently. It starts to develop cracks once you're a little way away from it and it's no longer like in the radius of effect of the Frostwalker boots. And most of the time you'll be safe to stand on it for a little while, but once you get a little bit 
further away and the time starts to tick down, the ice will eventually break. So you can't just stand out there on a river forever. Eventually the ice underneath you will start to crack if you're not moving around and the ice will break and you'll fall into the water. But as you can see, I'm freezing sections of this river as I go and even at a running pace, it allows me to move along the river like this very, very easily. It is going to have problems freezing blocks that contain other things already, such as mobs like the fish that we just saw swimming or there or the squid if they don't end up just dying on the banks of the river anyway. And stuff like seagrass and kelp aren't going to be frozen over. They can't occupy the same block because they are technically speaking blocks themselves. So there you go. As you saw there, the ice didn't form around where those fish were swimming. So Frostwalker has its limits, but is actually quite a powerful enchantment to have in your collection. You can use it to get around very easily. I just used it to pick up some ink from that squid. That's very cool. And of course, the ice will disappear after you, meaning that you can make your escape across an ocean if you're being chased by mobs and the Frostwalker effect will kind of like disappear after you and it means they won't be able to follow you. Now, as regards the ice farm that we made in a previous episode, you might think, oh great, this is going to be an infinitely renewable source of ice. All I need to do is dance around on the surface of this river and I can mine it with my Silk Touch pickaxe. However, frosted ice, the ice that is breaking in sunlight right now, is special. And if you break it with a Silk Touch pickaxe, you'll notice that even with efficiency, it's taking a little while for that to break and it doesn't turn into an item that you can drop. It doesn't drop as an item, it just disappears. And it disappears completely. You'll notice it doesn't break into a water source either. And it's only when the water sources in the river around it start to reform, you'll actually see that filling back up in with water. So yeah, it's it's a different enchantment and you cannot use Frostwalker to farm ice, at least not on Java edition. From what I understand, it might've been possible on Bedrock edition at some point, although now I think that has been patched with a more recent update. So this is what Frostwalker does and having a second Frostwalker enchantment, having Frostwalker 2 applied to these boots instead of one, will increase the power of the enchantment and therefore increase the radius around you where ice generates. So right now I can sprint run down this river and the ice is pretty much keeping up with me, but in Frostwalker 2 I think it extends another block's worth in each direction, meaning that you can almost sprint jump with the amount of ice that you generate and that will allow you to travel even faster although it's not a guaranteed thing and obviously once you jump into the water like that if you're no longer standing on a solid block you can't generate ice around you even if you are kind of underwater like this and you're walking off a solid block that's currently submerged it won't form ice underneath you so you have to start on the banks of some sort of body of water whether that's a river or an ocean or a lake or anything and yeah you have to be a little bit aware of the other things swimming around you but this is quite a fun enchantment to play with i'll show you it in third person this is the radius of frostwalker one so it's about two blocks in every direction in a radius around the player and now if i go into the anvil and upgrade it to frostwalker 2 taking me down to 10 levels for the first time in goodness knows how long you'll see that there is now a radius of three blocks around the player not only that but it is now nighttime and you will notice that with the sunlight gone the frosted ice is actually sticking around and like i said even with this it is still not possible to actually break and obtain the ice with the silk touch pick i am using a silk touch pick here just so you guys are aware but you'll notice that the frosted ice forms over and this stuff around here is melting because it's in close proximity to block light from this torch but at night time the frosted ice will not disappear it'll only disappear when the sun comes up so this can be used for a lot of fun stuff if you want to go ice skating at night down a river you can do this if you want to run across an ocean you can do that with frostwalker and at night the whole thing is going to make it possible for people to follow you mobs to follow you and for you to blaze a path across a an ocean <laughs> with just the aid of your frostwalker boots it is worth noting that this can have its downsides though. You'll notice the farmland around here is starting to lose its hydration and irrigation because I've removed effectively the water sources all around the wheat here and it's no longer getting water. Meaning that if this wheat were to be broken, if there was farmland around here that hadn't got crops planted in it already, that would all start to revert back to dirt. So it's important to be a little careful where you have frost walker and where you use it. The same applies to farms that use water sources like the sugarcane farm I have up there. There's a water source at one end of a tunnel underneath there that actually hydrates all of the land that the sugarcane is planted on and if that were to be turned into ice the rest of the water source would dry up because it's not flowing water and then if the machine activated it would pop all of the sugarcane off 
updating the block that the sugarcane is resting on. And because it wasn't receiving any more water, you wouldn't have any more sugarcane growing there. So that would permanently break my sugarcane farm if I walk up to it wearing Frostwalker. That's that's a problem. That's not something you want to happen. So it is quite important to be very careful where you're using Frostwalker and to use it if you're traveling long distances, long journeys over sea and you don't have a boat with you, but you happen to have access to your Frostwalker boots, or if you just feel like running around like this, it's a lot of fun to do. And in the cases of farms like that, if you're worried about Frostwalker damaging them, you can always make sure that a light source is placed nearby any water sources, because if you just put like a glowstone block or a sea lantern in there, it's still going to be able to block the water but will, it will allow you to have the frosted ice basically immediately melt, lessening the likelihood that it's going to break your farm. There's still a possibility that it might. It might dry up the water source fast enough and the farm would trigger right away, but it's something to bear in mind. If you put a glowstone block or a sea lantern or something in there, it's much less likely to happen. Now I'm going to get some sleep, and then when I wake up, you'll notice all of the frosted ice in the river out here starts to melt because it's now being exposed to sunlight again. And while I can still generate more of it by running on the river with Frostwalker, it's back to disappearing behind me as it goes. Now you can tell the difference between frosted ice and regular ice because of the cracks that start to form, but also if we take a look at this with the F3 screen, you'll notice that what we are looking at on the right hand side there where it says targeted block is frosted ice. And that is different to regular ice, packed ice, and blue ice. This is its own kettle of fish. That's why when you break it with a silk touch, you're not able to obtain it. And that is why it is not the right choice for farming ice. But it was a good thing to explore. And I'm kind of glad people brought it up because I had sort of forgotten about Frostwalker in a way. It's not an enchantment I use very often because I do a little bit of technical project here and there and I don't want to have my water sources break in my farms. But it's nice to have. It's good for the sense of adventure and magic and fun in Minecraft and I hope you guys will enjoy using it if you happen to get lucky and find a Frostwalker book in your world. But that's all we're going to cover for this episode of the Minecraft Survival Guide. Thank you guys so much for watching. My name has been Pixel Riffs. Don't forget to leave a like on this episode if you enjoyed it. Subscribe to my channel if you want to see more and I'll see you guys soon. Take care. Bye for now.